In this episode, Apple's new robot, biotech flies, AI that mastered Chinese medicine secrets, and more. Let's get it. And the category is Word on the Street for 200. Apple is developing a robot. It's skunk works for now and only several hundred people are said to be working on the project, but boy oh boy. Bloomberg, The Verge and others all frame this new miracle as a robot arm with an iPad on the end. The big twist is that it'll tilt and rotate the screen 360, kind of like a Pixar lamp. This desktop device is said to be Siri integrated and performs several functions, like controlling your smart home, video conferencing and monitoring home security. This news comes in light of Apple recently pulling the handbrake on the iCar project and Vision Pro not living up to sales expectations. Where's Jobs when you need him? Will the next Steve Jobs please stand up? You know how people say, the more things change, the more they stay the same? Yeah, they don't usually mean something that's more than a thousand years old, especially in high tech. However, scientists from Iraq and Australia have gone on to disprove that statement. See, they took traditional Chinese science of diagnosing humans by looking at their tongues and taught it to artificial intelligence. This required only a little over 5,000 high quality photos of the tons of people with various diseases. As a result, the accuracy of AI diagnoses amounted to 98%, which is more accurate than clinical standards. Now, those lucky folks who have access to this system can simply pull an Einstein 10 or so inches or 20 centimeters away and immediately receive an almost bulletproof conclusion of what they got. The scientists behind the system believe it's an app in the making and we do too. How convenient! While some are checking out people's patois, others are tinkering with flies, particularly, and God help this channel, the black soldier fly that recycles garbage and produces useful fertilizer. Actually, the flies are already doing it in landfills to no standing ovation. But now, researchers from Macquarie University in Australia out of all places want to change the genome of the fly so that they switch their diet up. Those Aussies want them to eat low-grade municipal biological waste from sewage treatment plants, slaughterhouses and whatnot, only to later quote-unquote produce specialized lipids that could replace fossil fuels. Not to mention the industrial enzymes for textiles, pharmaceuticals and other industries and quote improved animal feeds with just a tiny bit of synthetic biology. All we can think of is imagine how many flies you'd need to replace all the oil in the world they'd have to be the size of at least Jeff Goldblum. More name dropping, Ray Kurzweil, a famous futurologist and one of the directors at Google, has once again made a sensational statement. Basically, people are afraid of confrontation with artificial intelligence for nothing. Instead, quote, AI will penetrate us. In his book, The Singularity is Near, he claims that general artificial intelligence AGI, will be achieved by 2029, and it will reach the level of the most talented people in most areas of human presence. According to the futurologist, AGI is not just an advanced machine that mimics human behavior, but a system that actually understands and reasons about the world the way humans do. He believes that the creation of such intelligence will lead to the so-called singularity, the moment when technology starts to advance so fast that we can't control it, and it will radically change civilization. Apparently, by 2045, people will be able to increase their intelligence a million times thanks to advanced brain interfaces. Man, my ex-wife could use that. Ray says brains will be integrated with the cloud and will be able to get the information we need just by thinking it. This will lead to a great change in civilization, improving the quality of life, but it will also raise serious ethical and social questions. At the same time, the question of what AI will lead to, good or bad, Kurzweil himself responds to the former. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. 
Now, whether you're pro or against, robots are gonna need a while to get their act together. No matter the incredible quality assurance features attributed to Ubitech's Walker S humanoid robot in, say, China's electric car factories, or BMW's future human-free smart factory for that matter, this new video is a hope crusher. It shows a light version of the robot doing nothing more than carrying crates at the Zeker factory. It's a useful job, but far from Skynet. Or is this a tricky plan to lull us into complacency? Moving on, Toyota Research Institute added AI tech to their GR Supra and put a pair of these bad boys to a driftathon to see how they would evade collisions. The engineers are actually developing the system to help regular drivers on regular roads. But what better way than drifting can show how AI-controlled cars regain control after sliding on snow or ice? The technology is a neural network model of a car looped into three main tasks. First, help sensors detect the behavior of neighboring cars to plan a response. Second, use data from drift tests and map out the trajectory for a proper skid. And third, to adjust the steering, throttle, and brakes and avoid a crash afterwards. In the video, one car is just drifting while the second car has to follow it, all the while trying to avoid collisions. Looks like Toyota done did it again. And Unitree opened the source code for its software that teleoperated humanoids in virtual reality. Apple Vision Pro was used and Unitree's goal is to collect data to train robots. The human test subject can stretch his arms and roll punches while the robot is seen fully capable of copying all the moves with almost no delay. Some reports are now saying this technology could be used to colonize Mars. Elon, your move, sir. Romila Labs, which has given our viewers many bright and unusual moments, presented its new brilliant idea to the world. Meet Food Angel a robot to deliver food to the homeless from food banks and charitable organizations. This is their second attempt. Earlier, Romila tried to use regular delivery robots for this purpose, but the target audience did not respond well, as anybody would expect, really. They're homeless for a reason, Romila. But you know, anybody could be a bum. According to Bill Hicks, all it takes is the right girl, the right bar, and the right friends. Check out his album, Dangerous. This other robot from Animal is a bit cringy though. Seeing through walls scares people a lot, but seeing through grass, not so much. This is the ability that the four-legged robot Animal has now acquired. To make this possible, engineers have developed a semantic point cloud filter and a convolutional neural network that learns to adjust LiDAR measurements to determine the true reference surface for the robot's feet in tall grass. How is this applicable again? Let us know what you guys think. And did you know that the Japanese railroad company West JRC uses a robot that can almost be considered humanoid? It's called Multifunctional Railroad Heavy Equipment. The robot is attached to the end of an outrigger boom of a special transport moving along the rails. From the cabin of the same vehicle, it's controlled by the operator and on its own, thanks to tactile and force feedback. The big twist here is that the robot does not require special training from the operator. At the same time, the machine can climb up to 40 feet or 12 meters instead of people, check and repair power lines, paint poles, cut down trees, and lift loads weighing up to 90 pounds or 40 kilos. In the future, the robot will be able to do even more as various end effectors and tools are being developed for its arms. We can't wait to see what else the Japanese come up with. Amazon also has its own useful robot. It's called Maximo and it's a construction robot. It's completing a solar farm for the company and is about to embark on a new mission. The robot can work in almost any weather and lighting conditions, which is especially useful for Belfield, its next two gigawatt project in the Mojave Desert. Also, SpaceX will conduct the first human space flight over Earth's poles. Chinese entrepreneur Chun Wang rented the Crew Dragon capsule from Musk's company for this purpose. 
The lucky gentleman is known for opening the first cryptocurrency mining system F to pool in China and then becoming a billionaire and then obtaining multi-citizenship only to travel the world and enjoy the spoils of life. At first, Wang wanted to become a simple space tourist, but then he decided that he wanted to determine the plan of the mission and for this he had to buy it outright. On board with himself, the entrepreneur hired a movie director already working in the Arctic and space, Janike Mikkelsen, a pilot and explorer, Eric Phillips, and a specialist in robotics, Rabia Rogi, who will be responsible for autonomous system operations on board. The purpose of the mission called FRAM2 is to study a fairly new phenomenon called Steve, Strong Thermal Emission Velocity Enhancement. Wang also wants to take the first x-ray images of a human in space. The flight should take place as early as this year. Woohoo! Astronauts are stuck on the International Space Station because Boeing, despite spending years and receiving millions of dollars, wasn't able to create a spacecraft, which means those poor souls may sit there until 2025, even though their mission was originally designed to last only eight days. The problem is that all missions to the ISS, even the station's docking gateways, are booked years in advance. Although NASA initially pretended that their ship didn't have many problems, especially since it was able to deliver people into space, it's now becoming obvious that it has to be delivered back into Earth's atmosphere like garbage since it'll just burn up. And that's not all, even this option will not be a walk in the park. Well, the astronauts will have to wait until they can be picked up by Musk's dragon ship. While we're dreaming about intelligent humanoids, other robots are doing really useful things. For example, the six-wheeled all-terrain vehicle Pipe I from Becca is capable of traveling through underground pipelines without fear of water, toxic gases, or damaged surfaces. The robot is able to climb up and down to avoid obstacles and conduct a closer inspection of the surface and even send its owner's live feeds from its camera. For now, the robot is controlled by radio, but in the future, it may gain autonomy and take on a life of its own in the underground world of pipes and sewers. Google engineers reported that they have taught a robot to perform real-world tasks with the speed and dexterity of a human. The only catch is that it's about ping pong. And here we've seen so many robots playing well that we haven't even included these stories in the news feeds for a while now. In Google's case, however, there's one peculiarity. Researchers have trained the robot on big data and in simulation as standard, but the system has also been able to collect and analyze data from playing with humans during matches as it went along. Plus, when playing with a certain opponent, the robot realizing it wasn't pulling its weight tried to build new tactics to figure out how it could win. All in all, there are some movements in the right direction, but not that impressive, considering that with all the tech, the system won 45% of the time against beginners and average players, and never once beat a strong player. And an unusual approach to training and controlling robots was shown by Extend Robotics. The idea is that speech recognition has been added to teleoperation using VR headsets and controllers. The company doesn't disclose details, but apparently if the robot doesn't exactly replicate human movements, it can be corrected by simply saying, wrong way, or gentler. The demonstration we see here was conducted on the dexterous avatar robot. And there's more, but we're out of time. So subscribe to the channel, like the video, and check out our Instagram for more from the world of high tech.